a very warm good evening to one and all welcome to geography class so as you can see on the screen today what we are going to study is the weather and the instruments so uh, students we all know that in order to collect various climatic data and to prepare maps and charts the following elements of weather and climates are normally been measured by various weather instruments they are number one temperature number two atmospheric pressure number three humidity number four rainfall and fifth is a sunshine so let's talk about the first topic that is a temperature so temperature can be defined as the degree of hotness or coldness of air at a particular place so the instrument used to measure temperature are thermometer maximum and minimum thermometer and stems in screen so we know that temperature is a very important element of climate and weather. It is a term that is used to uh, express and to describe the in intensity or the degree of heat. Uh, sun is the main source of heat for the earth, but the sun rays do not heat the whole surface of the earth equally. So the amount of heat any place therefore depends mainly upon on two factors. Number one is your the duration of the sunlight. Number two, the angle at which the sun rays strike the earth. Thermometer. Here you can see a diagram of a thermometer. So now let's talk about the thermometer, some characteristics and points of thermometer. Temperature is measured with the help of a thermometer. We all know that. A thermometer is a narrow glass tube filled with a liquid. Here you can see in a diagram that is a narrow glass tube filled with a liquid and the liquid used in thermometers are basically mercury and alcohol. So in Fahrenheit, what we used to do, the freezing point of water is 32 degrees centigrade and the boiling point is 1212 degree. But in our country, like India, air temperature is recorded in the Celsius degree. We also come to know that um, thermometer is basically used to measure the body temperature. So the Celsius of the freezing point of water is 0 degree and the boiling point of water is 100 degree. Uh, then we talk about the atmospheric pressure. What is atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure is the force uh, that has been exerted by the vertical column of air per unit area. You need to remember that they are talking about the vertical columns of air, not the horizontal one. So air is made up of number of mixed gases and it has weight too. So metrologists, they use the unit millibar to measure the pressure. Okay. So measurement of atmospheric pressure, if we talk about atmospheric pressure measured by using a barometer, which has been invented by Galileo uh, and his assistant, Tori Sally in 1643. So they have divided the barometer into two parts, the simple barometer and aneroid barometer. So simple barometer here you can see so a simple barometer basically consists of a long glass tube filled with the mercury. So here you can see in the diagram. So it is basically sealed with the upper end open at the lower end because it is inverted form. So the lower ends of the glass tube is inverted and a bowl of mercury whose surface is exposed to the air. So what happens when the air pressure push up the mercury in the tube and the reading is recorded from the scale given on the glass tube and uh, some of the facts of the units of pressure that the pressure is measured in millibar we all know so on map places of equal pressure and joined by lines they are known as isobars then we have aneroid barometer so after mercury barometer it is very large and not portable so aneroid barometer is used the Advantages of using aneroid barometer. Let's see what are the advantages of aneroid barometer. Number one, it has no mercury column and it is very easy to handle. Second thing, it has a metal box which is partially evacuated, not completely partially. 
A barograph is used to monitor pressure. So what happened? The box is very sensitive to variation in the air pressure. So it expands the pressure in low and get compressed when the pressure is high. Therefore, the box is connected to a pointer which moves over a scale to indicate that the atmospheric pressure. Then we have humidity. So what is humidity? Humidity is basically the actual amount of water present in the air. So the air has certain capacity to hold water vapor at a given temperature. We can measure humidity in two ways. Number one is your absolute humidity. Second one is your relative humidity. So let's see. First one is your absolute humidity. So the actual amount of water vapor present in the air and Absolute humidity can be expressed in the term of per cubic meter. So it is known as absolute humidity. Second, we have relative humidity. In this humidity, basically we are finding out the ratio. The ratio between the actual amount of water vapor and the total amount of air that can hold at a given temperature. Basically, relative humidity is expressed in terms of percentage. Then we have measurement of relative humidity. How we measure relative humidity? So in order to measure relative humidity of the atmosphere of a particular place, we use wet and dry bulb thermometer or it is also known as hygrometer. Here you can see a wet and dry bulb thermometer. So this instrument consists of two sensitive thermometer. A dry bulb thermometer which you can see on my left hand side and wet bulb thermometer on my right hand side. So a dry bulb thermometer records the actual air temperature of the atmosphere and a wet bulb thermometer. The bulb of the wet thermometer is covered with a piece of muslin. It is basically like a cotton piece which have been covered with a cloth which is constantly moist means we have to Put some water in order to keep it moist okay cooling of the wet bulb thermometer is proportional to the rate of evaporation so what happened the rate of evaporation is turn and dependent on the relative humidity of the surrounding area then we have rainfall so rainfall is uh, always measured by an instrument called a rain gauge so rainfall is usually expressed in centimeters or millimeters sometimes we refer rainfall as a precipitation also so there are two different types of precipitation liquid and solid precipitation so the amount of rainfall at a place over a particular period is measured by a rain gauge so let me show you what is a rain gauge this is a rain gauge which is consists of a cylinder has a vessel at the bottom in order to collect water and funnel at the top so here you can see a funnel the circumference of the top of the funnel is equivalent to the cylindrical so this ensure that all water going through the funnel is collected to the vessel what happened at the end of the day the water is collected the rain water which is collected is poured in a measuring jar in order to find out the actual amount of rain water received the rain gauge is kept in an open level space and away from trees and buildings. It is generally placed 30 cm above the ground. So here you can see that the rain gauge has been placed 30 m above the ground because in order to prevent the splash of the ground water. So the rain gauge is also used to measure amount of snowfall and hail. Snow and hails are collected. So after measuring being merited. Snow collects about 10 times as deep as water. So it is equivalent to one millimeter of rainfall. What precautions you should take while using a rain gauge? Number one, the rain gauge should be kept 30 centimeter above the ground, 30 centimeter. Second thing, it should be protected from animals. So students, that's for all today in this video. I hope you like the video. In next class, we are going to talk about a new chapter. Thank you so much for listening to the week chapter. God bless you all. Bye.